Hi everybody, this is Lara with your end of the week video for the S&P 500 for the trading week ending Friday 8th of November. We're getting the upward movement we're expecting and it's looking quite like a third wave which is what's expected and so I'm expecting relatively brief and shallow corrections along the way up toward the next target. The next target is at 3179. There will be three big consolidations or pullbacks in the next few months as this bull market finally comes to an end and I think it's probably going to take more than a year or it could even be two years depending on how time consuming those consolidations are. The next one I'll label minor wave four and I'm expecting that one to be very very shallow quite likely to alternate between the deep zigzag of minor two. Elliott Wave Analysis first, Classic Analysis last. There is a lot of support from underlying rising breadth and new all-time highs from on-balance volume for this Elliott Wave count. This structure is an impulse and I'm labelling this bull market which began in March 2009 as a simple impulse. One is off to the left of the chart. It's on that last weekly candlestick in November 2014. Two is here. Three four and now we need to see five complete as a five wave structure. When I put one, two, three and four in those positions I then use Elliott's technique, his first technique to draw a trend channel around the impulse. The first trend line, this is the first one that's drawn and it's drawn from one to three and then a parallel copy is pulled down and placed on the end of two and when you do that it perfectly shows where four found support and there's this overthrow for the third wave of the third wave. This channel looks absolutely textbook perfect and that gives me an indication that one, two, three and four are likely placed in the right positions. There's a really important implication from that. Three is shorter than one so that means that five may not be longer than a quality in length with three so the whole structure has to end at or before this price point. Five may only be a five wave structure that's either an impulse or an ending diagonal. Impulses in fifth wave positions are much more common and we've recently had an ending diagonal wave count invalidated by a new all time high and so it looks like five is unfolding as an impulse with primary one and two complete, primary three incomplete, when it's done primary four will be expected to unfold over a few weeks possibly even months and it must remain above primary wave one price territory and then finally primary five to move beyond the end of three to avoid a truncation. Primary three may only subdivide as an impulse so far intermediate waves one and two are complete. Let's take a look at this now at the daily chart level where this high is this point here here's intermediate one a quick sharp zigzag for intermediate two and intermediate three unfolding it may only subdivide as an impulse. Here's minor one and two and three coming to a conclusion in the next week or so and then four and then five on up toward the target for intermediate three. Minor wave three may only subdivide as an impulse and now within it it looks like its corrections are being relatively brief and shallow and it's showing an increase in momentum beyond minor wave one exactly as a third wave should. I'm expecting some further increase in momentum as intermediate three comes to an end so that it too shows stronger momentum than intermediate wave one. It doesn't have to, it just would most commonly do so. Minor wave three so far may have one, two and three may not be complete. When it's done though I'll be expecting again a brief shallow correction for minute four and then on up toward the final target. When minute three and four are complete I can add to this target at a second wave degree at minute wave degree. At that stage the target may change or it may widen to a small zone. For now it's expecting minor three to reach a common Fibonacci ratio to minor one. Minute four may not move into minute one price territory but I expect it'll be really shallow and if it does if it is deep enough it may find support at the lower edge of this channel. Keep drawing this channel on the daily chart from one to the last high place a parallel copy on the end of two. 
When Minute 3 is complete, then that would channel would be drawn using Elliot's first technique, and so it may show where 4 finds support if it is that deep, but it may not be able to get that deep. When Minor 3 is complete, then Minor 4 may be expected to exhibit alternation with its counterpart Minor 2. This is a very deep, quick zigzag. It lasted 10 sessions, and so I'll expect Minor 4 would most likely be a very shallow, sideways structure like a combination or a triangle or maybe a flat correction. I'll expect it to be very shallow and possibly quite time consuming. It may last longer than 10 seconds. Sorry, 10 seconds, 10 sessions. It has to remain above minor wave one price territory. There is now enough room for it to begin, but it would look better if there was a bit more room. If price can get up to closer to the target for minor three, that would allow more room for minor wave four to move in. At the hourly chart level, I've got two wave counts, and this, because of classic analysis, I'm switching this back over to be the main wave count. I expect again that minor wave 3 may actually be incomplete as an impulse. It has 1, 2 and 3 incomplete and then it needs 4 and 5. The third wave of the third wave may be extending, that's really common for this market. 1, 2, 3, 4 may continue a little bit lower when markets open on Monday to complete as a zigzag when I look at this movement on the 5 minute chart, it looks very very good as a 5 wave impulse, but I can also see how it could be labelled a single or possibly a triple zigzag. I think it looks best as a 5, and if that is a 5, then minuet 4 can't be over at that low, that could only be wave A. Now we may have wave B, and there is a little bit of weakness, there's a little bit of divergence here between price and some indicators, we'll get to that in the classic analysis, and then C needs to move at least a little below A to avoid a truncation, and it might bring price down to the lower edge of the acceleration channel. This is an important trend line while minor wave 3 is underway. This is the third wave, and so any surprises will be to the upside. Price doesn't move in straight lines, there are pullbacks and consolidations along the way. And when a third wave is unfolding, those little pullbacks and consolidations should be used as opportunities. Minuet 4 may not move into wave 1 price territory. There are multiple ways to label this upward movement, and here's another way. It's possible that minor wave 3 was over at the last high. Although, after, when we get to classic analysis, I'll show you why I expect this is now a little less likely. Now we've got some data at the end of the week for the weekly candlesticks. Four, if it's unfolding, would be expected to last probably longer than 10 sessions and would be expected to be fairly shallow and it can't move into wave one price territory so there's not a lot of room for it to move into. And so if four has begun here, then I would expect this is only a first wave within wave A and the second wave may not move beyond the start of the first wave above the short-term invalidation point. If we do see a new high above that point on Monday, then I'm going to label Minuet 4 over here. This will be the main wave count, and we'll be working with this target. But if price does continue to move down, and it starts to become choppy and overlapping, and it remains in a correction for another day or two, then we may see, or may expect, minor 4 could be unfolding and may have arrived earlier than expected. The target for intermediate 3 still remains the same though. At the weekly chart level, if we move the degree of labelling for the entirety of this bull marker all down one degree, it's possible that instead of a major bear marker arriving when it's done, we could just be seeing a relatively small, shallow and brief bear market when it's done. The structure of this fifth wave, now here labelled at primary degree, is still seen in the same way, the invalidation point's the same, the structure is the same, and it still has to complete, and that's probably going to take many months, if not a year or even possibly two, to complete.
This is the weekly chart, some classic technical analysis now. The most bullish piece of information here on this chart is volume, quite nicely supporting upward movement. That's really good to see, and that's exactly what I would expect to see for a third wave. I've placed, when I was preparing this chart, I placed a horizontal line along here and looked at it really, really carefully and put it perfectly on this axis up here. On balance volume has failed by the very smallest of margins to match all time highs. Price is making highs but on balance volume at the weekly chart level has not managed to make corresponding highs. That's a very very small bearish piece of information though and I'm actually not going to give it weight because it's not the same situation at the monthly chart or the daily chart level and the difference here is so small. I expect we may have another upward week next week and this very very tiny divergence may disappear. What I am actually going to give more weight to here this week is this bullish signal from on balance volume. It's broken above this resistance line which has at least three possibly four prior tests and is reasonably long held. This is a weekly chart so this has got some reasonable technical significance. This supports the view that it looks like we've got a third wave up, particularly volume. This does look like a third wave up. This stalled candlestick pattern, however, this is a three candlestick pattern, a couple of normal range or longer range real bodies, followed by a smaller range real body, indicates a bit of a lack of strength in the last week. That's okay, this is not actually, well it is a bearish reversal pattern, but it's not the best or strongest bearish reversal pattern. That's an engulfing pattern. This one's relatively weak. But just be aware this is indicating along with this very slight divergence if you want to have a more bearish outlook then it could be possible that minor four could be arriving a little bit earlier than expected and we could be moving into or price could be moving into a more time consuming consolidation earlier than expected. This is not particularly bearish though. RSI is still in neutral territory. There's plenty of room for price to continue on higher. It can reach overbought and it can remain there for quite a long period of time when this market has a strong upward trend as it did back here. This longer term divergence I will expect to probably develop further. Sometimes it can just disappear but in the long drawn out process of a market top as this aged bull market comes to an end this divergence with RSI may continue to develop further. ADX is below 15, it's too low to indicate a trend but if it starts to rise and reaches 15 at this stage the DX, positive DX line is above the negative but they have been whipsawing because we've had these big pullbacks along the way up. We still got that series of higher highs and higher lows from the sustained market low in this nice V bottom back down here which is exactly what we were expecting. This daily candlestick, although this is a downward day with a lower low and a lower high, it's actually fairly bullish because price has closed really close to highs and it's got a little bit of a long lower wick and I, so I will be expecting more upward movement and if we get a new high early on Monday when the market opens, if it gaps up to a new high or just jumps up to a new high after opening, then I will label that little correction of minuet 4 over and we'll be moving on up to complete the middle of a third wave. It's still a third wave. However, volume for Friday was quite low. I would expect within this session there was more upward movement than downward. It's gapped lower to open quite low, but there's a lot of upward movement within this session. It looks like within that very last session, upward movement may not have support from volume. ADX at the daily chart level indicates there is an upward trend still in a relatively early stage there's plenty of room for this trend to run. ATR is declining as price rises, absolutely normal behaviour for this market and here's on balance volume making strong new highs along with price confirming the highs from price. This is what I would expect to see from a third wave and so I don't have any concern for that very tiny little bit of divergence at the weekly chart when you see it's so strong here at the daily chart level. RSI is still just in neutral territory, plenty of room for price to keep on going. RSI can reach up into overbought and it can remain there for a reasonable period of time when this particular market has a bullish trend. 
MACD fully bullish and stochastics overbought and this can remain so for a really long period of time when this market has a strong upward trend. At the, day, uh, at the weekly chart level, this week prices moved higher with a high high and a high low but the AD line has had a really slight decline. This is a small amount, very small amount of bearish divergence. This is a slight warning, it's possible we could be moving into minor 4 earlier than expected but at the daily chart level there was this divergence here which may now be resolved. At the daily chart level there's, it's really not great, there's not a lot of bearish divergence here. I'm just going to go back to that weekly chart and point out this has happened 3, 4, 5 times, before, 4 times before now at the weekly chart level and here it was followed immediately by more upward movement and here again more upward movement. So this could be an earlier warning and again here followed by upward movement. This could be an earlier warning of an approaching consolidation. We we're expecting minor four, it's waiting in the wings. It doesn't necessarily mean that next week has to move price lower. It's just a warning that it could. At the daily chart level, Friday moved price lower. The AD line is essentially flat, so that could be read as ever so slightly bullish. Between price and inverted VIX, there's now over two years of bearish divergence. Again, part of that long, drawn-out topping process that's normal for this particular market. Inverted VIX has made new short-term swing highs, though, as price has made new highs above its prior swing highs. So there's no shorter-term divergence, but there is this longer-term divergence from the previous highs back over here for inverted VIX. I expect that may continue to develop even further and be even more long lasting as this bull market finally comes to an end in coming months or years. It could still take years. For the very short term picture though, Friday session has moved price lower but inverted VIX has moved quite strongly higher. Although Friday had a lower low and a lower high, there was some upward movement within that session and that upward movement has come with a normal corresponding decline in VIX. Remember this is inverted VIX, so when inverted VIX moves up that means VIX moves down. This divergence for this single day is bullish, it's quite strong, this is quite a strong increase here from inverted VIX. And so that would suggest that we may be going to get some more upward movement when markets open on Monday and if that happens I'd label that last very small little pullback complete and we'll use those targets for those third waves. That's all from me with your S&P analysis this week. I hope all of our members are having a fabulous weekend.